Hi, it's Dr. Steve Weiner from Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, which is in the Panhandle. What I'm going to do today is show you what vascular mapping is all about, looking for the vessels that could cause potential problems. So what I'm looking at right now is the superficial temporal artery. So that's a superficial temporal artery. And now there's a deep temporal artery, and we just saw that right there. Okay, that's the anterior deep temporal artery. So what we're looking at now is the infraorbital artery. It measures about seven millimeters deep, coming out of the infraorbital frame. What we're looking at now is the angular artery. It's approximately four millimeters deep in the nasal labial fold near the piriform area. What we're looking at now is the superior labial artery, which is deep to the vicularis oris muscle, which is the darker area that you see more on the right side. And this is a typical positioning of the superior labial artery, which is deep to the abicularis oris muscle. And the injection should take place superficial to the abicularis oris muscle to prevent inadvertent injection in these arteries. So what we're looking at now is the inferior labial artery. It's a little more tortuous, and it goes a little bit superficial to the muscle, but it's mostly deep to the abicularis oris muscle. And you see that you have two to three millimeters for the injection in the southern coastal area. So here we have the facial artery in the antagonial notch, and it's a pretty significant vessel that's around two, two and a half millimeters in diameter. It's the largest vessel in the face. So right now we're looking at the supertrochlear artery, which is on the right side of the box. It's coming over the orbital rim at around five millimeters. So now we're looking at the supraorbital artery. It's on the right side of the box. It's coming over the orbital rim. So right now what we're looking at is the facial artery around the takeoff of the superior labial and inferior labial arteries. So this is an interesting view. This is taking the probe at the lateral commissure of the oral cavity and seeing where the artery, the facial artery is from that. And I'm going to show you the measurement. So this is the medial aspect of the probe, which was set on her lateral commissure. And then when I measure that to the facial artery, I get 1.26 centimeter, or 12 and a half millimeters, which is about right. It's between 12 and 15 millimeters from the oral commissure. So what we show here is a transverse facial artery. And it's coming out of the parotid, and it's going along the masseter. So what I'm showing right now is a superficial temporal artery in the preauricular area. It's a very substantial artery. So what I'm looking at here is the dorsal nasal artery. It's a pretty substantial artery, so you've got to be careful when there's injections in the nose. What I'm doing here is looking at the supraorbital artery higher up in the forehead, and you see it becomes much more superficial. Remember, it was around five millimeters deep. Now it comes uh, two millimeters deep. So let me briefly go over the probes that I use. I have two probes. This is an 18 megahertz probe. It's also called a hockey stick probe. And this is a linear probe. This is a 22 megahertz probe. So I mainly use this hockey stick probe, the 18 megahertz probe. So the higher the megahertz, the more definition you get, but you can't go quite as deep. So what I find is the 18 megahertz probe is what I use mostly. The 22 megahertz probe is more superficial, it's more for skin. So these are the preset exams that are in most ultrasounds. And what I use mostly is the rheumatologic superficial, but I also use the MSK, musculoskeletal, and I use it in the wrists or the hand or the ankle, sometimes the elbow setting. I think that ultrasound is ultimately going to be the gold standard to take care of vascular occlusions. It's also going to help you in looking at vascularity of critical structures, looking at prior placement of filler, and overall the anatomy. While we are very early at using ultrasound in the aesthetic arena, it's been used widely throughout the entire medical field. It's been used in Europe for years, and if you want further information about using ultrasound in your fillers, uh, contact me because I do do some trainings on these. Thanks.